So whenever I talk to candidates about what they're struggling with the most, the two things that always come up are how to build issue trees, how to build really good MEC issue trees, and second, how to deal with public sector cases. So I decided to, in this video, to tackle both things at once and show you how I build an issue tree for a public sector case and exactly what's my thinking process behind each step of the way. At the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a really good resource to learn how to make better issue trees. So stick until the end. And if you want to watch more videos on issue trees, MISI, structuring, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the issue tree example on a public sector problem. So I love this issue tree example for two main reasons. The first one is that this is a public sector problem. And as you're going to see, things don't change that much when you're building issue trees for public or, or the private sector. But still, it's interesting because you don't see many of these around. So uh, I see that candidates get much more confidence to solve a public sector case once they've seen different structures for uh, different public sector problems versus, you know, revenues minus costs, uh, profit thing that you see in private sector cases. Now, the second reason is more interesting, and it is that I built a whole issue tree using just one very simple technique. Uh, and you can't build issue trees for every type of problem using this type of technique, but uh, the technique is basically uh, separating each step of the problem into two different uh, kind of opposite problems. Uh, so just see me doing it and uh, you're going to see how you can use this technique. It's not the only one and you can't just rely on it. But just by separating a problem into two problems and then each of those problems into two different problems again, uh, you're going to be able to build issue trees much better. So let's jump in. So the problem is to help a government solve illiteracy with children who go to its public schools. And I'm going to define uh, helping as finding the root cause. Why are these children illiterate? OK, uh, because that's the first step in helping this government. And of course, we need steps later on or to tackle the issue once we find it. But I'm going to build an issue tree to try to answer the question, why are these children illiterate so that we can help this government later on. So that's the first step, defining the problem pretty well and explaining to the interview, to the interviewer uh, what is the precise problem you're going to solve with your tree and what are the steps afterwards. Now, let's break this down. The first layer of this tree I'm going to do, well, maybe these children are going to school but are illiterate, or maybe they're illiterate because they aren't going to school. So I basically separated the problem into two completely opposite scenarios. Pretty intuitive, right? Uh, let's tackle the scenario in which kids are going to school first. This could happen. Uh, they could be illiterate even though they're going to school, either because they aren't being well taught or Maybe they're not learning how to read, even though they're being well taught. So again, just separating the problem into two different scenarios. Now, if they're not being well taught, that could be because there are not enough teachers, right? Uh, this could be one scenario where they're not being well taught or they're not being well taught because these teachers there are enough of them, but they're not teaching well, right? These are the only two scenarios where you can't be well taught. Either you have no teachers or they're not teaching well. Now, if there are not enough teachers, that's we've kind of got to the root cause of the problem. Uh, we could find out why there are not enough teachers, but uh, then it's kind of a different problem. Uh, but if teachers aren't teaching well, why are they not teaching well? Right. The, the, there I see at least two scenarios here. One is that they can't teach well and the other one is that they don't want to teach well. So maybe they can't teach because they don't know how to teach or uh, I don't know, 
the country is an autocracy and, and, and there's a uh, I don't know it's a military dictatorship and there's a military guy in class that doesn't allow them to teach or whatever uh, or maybe they don't want to teach or they don't want to teach well right uh, so I'm gonna use this simple technique of dividing the problem into two different opposites for the whole tree. Okay, so let's suppose that they don't learn even though they're being well taught. Why might that happen? Well, maybe they lack the willingness to learn, they don't want to learn, or they lack the ability to learn. They, they can't learn. So I basically use the same mini framework uh, to break down why teachers aren't teaching well, uh, to break down why the kids aren't learning even though they're being well taught. And you can think of this willingness, ability, or uh, want and can as a mini framework for why humans uh, are not doing something or are doing something. To do something, people must want to do that uh, and be able to do that unless they're forced to do it, which is another matter. Uh, so you can think of this mini framework. It doesn't sound like these are two opposite complementary things, but they are. Now let's tackle the scenario where kids are not going to school. Why are they not going to school? Well, either because there are not enough schools or they're not going to school even though there are schools available. Again, just separated into two different opposite scenarios. If there are not enough schools, why is that? Well, maybe there are not enough buildings or classrooms. It's an infrastructure problem. Or there are enough buildings, but they're not operating. So we don't have staff to man the buildings. Or we don't have utilities or I don't know. Uh, Many things could be happening, but maybe there are empty buildings. But still, there, these are not fully operational schools. So you could think of this as an infrastructure or an operations problem, but I, I, I didn't have to think of this specific framework to, to break it down. I just broke it down into two logical scenarios. But maybe kids are not going to school, even though there are schools available. And that could be because they can't go to school. Maybe their families don't, uh, don't allow them to go to school or they don't have transportation to school or they have to work uh, because this is a poor country. Or maybe they or their parents who make the decisions from them don't want to go to school. They could go to school, but they don't feel like it. They... They prefer to sleep or to hang out with their friends or, or to work with their parents in their local businesses. So again, I'm using that willingness and ability uh, to go to school in this case. So I basically built a whole issue tree just by speaking of opposites, right? Uh, maybe there is school, maybe there isn't school. Maybe they are going to school, maybe they're, they're not going to school. Uh, maybe there are classrooms, but they're not functioning, or maybe there are not, no classrooms. Maybe there are no teachers, maybe there are teachers, but they're not teaching well. Willingness and ability. And you can't do this for every uh, scenario, as I said, but you can build pretty good trees just by using this technique a lot of times, especially when it's a complex problem that could have different uh, multiple different causes and if you tell me hey Bruno this issue tree is too simple it won't help you solve the problem and find out why these children are not reading well I disagree it can help a lot because each uh, part of the tree is one potential reason and if we find the reason let's say we find out that uh, they're not learning because the teachers, there are enough teachers, but they can't teach. Uh, and they can't teach, say, because they were not trained to teach people how to read. Sounds like a pretty difficult thing to do, uh, to teach a person how to read. And then we, we know the root cause, and now we can help this government uh, solve the problem because we need to hire better teachers and give them better training, right? But if we found that, well, there are not enough schools, and all the children who go to school are learning, 
uh, how to read, but a bunch of kids are not going to school, uh, then we need to build more schools. Or maybe these schools are built already, but they're not operating. Then we need to, oper uh, to, to put these schools into operation. So even the simple tree that was built using the simple technique can help a lot you solve the problem. And it's much better than starting the problem with no issue tree and giving a bunch of random ideas of how this government could uh, make the, the, the children learn how to read better uh, without knowing the root cause first. Now, as I said throughout this example, uh, separating the problem into two opposite branches or two different problems is one way to build these minimisi structures until you have a complete issue tree to solve the problem. But it's not the only way, and nor is it a way that you can reliably trust for every problem. There are other techniques involved. So if you want to learn more about how to create great issue trees, no matter the problem, I wrote a guide called the Definitive Guides to Issue Trees, which you can find in our blog. Uh, you can just Google the Definitive Guides to Issue Trees plus crafting cases or something like that on Google, or you can click the link that I'm gonna put in the description of this video to get access to it. Highly recommend it if you want to learn more about issue trees. Now, if you want to learn uh, more about how to be messy in your case interviews, which is an important part of being able to make issue trees, there is a video on the five ways to be messy that I'm gonna put here. And also, if you wanna watch an example, another example of me creating another issue tree, there's gonna be a video right here for you to click. If you've liked this video, subscribe to this channel so you can get more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.